Controlling for variables is a really important principle for me when it comes to orthopedic evaluation and treatment. And the reason I think it's so central is because we don't understand somebody's musculoskeletal system, whether it's normal or pathological, we don't understand that individual system until we get to understand its behavior over time. There are rare cases indeed where you can make a diagnosis within minutes or within 10 minutes, for example, with a wrist fracture or an ACL tear or a lumbar disc herniation causing radicular symptoms to the foot. You can certainly make a diagnosis in rare cases very quickly without having to, for instance, control for variables or spend a lot of time understanding the behavior of the system. But I would argue that even in those cases where the diagnosis seems rather straightforward, you don't understand the behavior of the system until you spend more time around it and understanding the behavior of not only the musculoskeletal system, but the other systems and the body and the person in general, understanding that is central to getting good patient outcomes with interventions. But today I want to point out a few ways that I sometimes control variables because for me with testing and usually with treatment, I want to inject just one variable into a patient's life to understand the system and therefore be more effective with our care. So if I'm trying to figure out, for example, if someone's ankle or foot pain is symptomatic or is a problem because of an ankle problem or a lumbar problem, one example of controlling for the variables is if I have this patient do lumbar extension in prone, but they're flat on the floor and that ankle is in sustained plantar flexion, if I wanna take the ankle out of the equation, I may put a bolster under that patient's distal shin, or I may have the patient use the plinth where their foot is hanging off the bed and the ankle is in more of a neutral position to understand if the changes or lack thereof after doing 10, 20, 30 lumbar extensions in prone in the foot are due to lumbar movements or sustained positioning and ankle plantar flexion, that's why I would change the position of the ankle because I wanna make sure that we're assessing the effect or non-effect of just lumbar extension. The same also applies with lumbar prone extension with the hip. Sometimes I'll have the hip come off the plinth so that the hip is in more of a flex position versus an extended position so I can better understand if it's hip extension or lumbar extension causing the change in the hip or buttock or groin or thigh symptoms, for example. If I have a patient who's doing thoracic extension in seated, which typically uses the arms like this, and therefore when the patient goes into thoracic extension over the chair, their shoulder goes into flexion. If I wanna figure out the shoulder pain is related to thoracic extension, I may not have the patient put his hands like this. Maybe I'll go into less shoulder flexion like this, or maybe I'll just use the opposite arm, and then maybe I'll put some overpressure through that elbow in the opposite arm, or maybe I'll just look at thoracic extension in a different position where the shoulder is out of the picture. So you can never just move one part of the musculoskeletal system without having the other parts play a role. Sometimes they can definitely be quiet, but they're going to be in a position. Muscles may be quiet or not, but joints are always doing something. They're going to be in a movement, they're going to be doing a movement, or they're going to be sustaining a position. Even something as benign as the patient sitting here and me as a clinician doing passive, maybe finger end range extension, if that person is seated upright, then we'd have more of a spine neutral position. But if they're slouched in kyphosis, maybe protrusion or neck flexion, then I have to consider is the change in that over time due to the position of the neck or the thoracic spine, or is it really due to the end range extension of the finger? Now that's not a very normal example, but I do have people sit upright to try to take away that variable. This can apply to lots of different things. When I flex somebody's knee in supine, do I also wanna be flexing their hip? The question is at the end of the day, how is the system behaving? Again, if you believe on day one, you know exactly what the diagnosis is and how the system is behaving, you don't need to worry about these kind of intricacies of the different variables. But for me, I argue that you don't really know that on day one in the majority of cases. So for me to figure out if your knee pain is problem, a problem in your hip or your knee, I'm going to be cautious about knee movements regarding how they move the hip or don't move the hip. So controlling variables is an important part of the puzzle for me because I find that most orthopedic disorders can be addressed by just changing one or two variables in a patient's life. And if we try to control for variables in that investigation, we're more likely to find that answer sooner.